Hello everybody, welcome back. Good morning. Let's uh, let's get straight into the charts then, shall we? Uh, looking at the way that the Dixie closed yesterday. To be honest, it's the same as it's been closing for the most part of this week. Bullish on the four hourly and bearish on the daily. So with that, we'll just leave that alone because it's a matter of breakout or breakdown really. Breakdown basically on, um, well, breakout above exactly where we're getting rejected here. 103.7, Pump City FM. That'll take us actually quite quite high, probably to 105 and maybe beyond, because the trend will uh, have, have reversed at that point. And for the uh, for the downside invalidations, with well, the four hour closure below, basically 102.9, we'll call it. And again, invalidation um, either side. So the Dixie is possibly reversing its trend. Possibly. Do you know what this reminds me of? Bitcoin. It reminds me of Bitcoin. <coughs> the reason being is that Bitcoin on the daily, golden crossed, diverging above 200 exponential moving average, simple moving average, but slowly meandering down, offering nothing more than opportunity, really, when you come to test these major areas. 35,600, 33,700, you know, excellent opportunities if and when we get there. I think it's probably a question of when, to be honest. Now the day, uh, the, the four hour is slightly different. So this is where I took the profit yesterday, and this could be basically the next top. Could be another top. Obviously, selling this top was great. Taking a bid here, selling here, like I said on the Telegram, on I alluded to on Twitter. <clears throat> These are the areas really, and this is what's known as a death cross retest. Basically, what's the opposite of what's going on for um, for Dixie really. Dixie's doing the opposite of this. So, if you're looking for anything more to materialise out of this four hourly, because again, you know, first rejection, that's fine. It could easily go back up and break above it. Uh, what well, you've got to look for are signs of life, and where's the support? Well, judging by the way that we reclaimed this um, this uh, Bollinger Band, this is where we took the position, wasn't it? We were talking about it yesterday, saying, look, we're above this area, we're starting for a positive slope. Now, obviously, we've got a positive slope, which means that all of these moving averages here are pretty sturdy for as far as uh, supports are concerned. First support <coughs> is going to be a 10 exponential, which is literally just a, a you know, fraction of a percent from where we are right now. 41,284. 21 exponential moving average, which has actually been relatively um, used as a resistance. Rejection here, rejection, 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 all the way down. Uh, rejection, 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 rejection. So lots of lots of rejection. Is it going to show that it can prove itself to be a support? If it is, that means a further one and a half percent, basically down to roughly forty thousand eight hundred and seventy-five. And again, this is just where it is right now. <clears throat> For the next three hours, that's where it's going to be. Three hours from now, it'll be probably higher, provided that the price action remains above it. And then the last stand is going to be the Bond Band Center, which is just a little bit further down, forty thousand six hundred. But, you know, I'm still one of uh, being happy to wait for much lower prices. Yesterday was uh, a day where it did suggest a 5% pump. That's the whole point of yesterday's video. And what did we get? A 5% pump. That was given to us quite neatly and tidily on the 4 hourly. And then we got the uh, the all clear on that on the 1 hourly where we're saying that there's going to be a pump signal sooner, as soon as we flash green. And that's exactly what we've got. And that's exactly what we did. So we've got a golden cross here on the one hourly uh, on exponentials and simple moving averages, basically around 41,000, 41,000 and uh, 40,800. So there is definitely support below us on a variety of time frames. Uh, the money flow index is really falling off the cliff now here on the, on the one hourly. So it wouldn't surprise me to see a bounce around here. <clears throat> but that could just be, you know, getting ready for a, on, the, on the one hourly time frame, just getting ready for another lower high. So I'm not here to, to say that there's going to be any more major bullish moves, you know, on crypto or, or Bitcoin or anything. The video yesterday was, well, you'll have to see it for yourself. Like the, the point of the video is that we're getting ready for the smallest bounce in the world, a 5% bounce. And that's exactly what we've got. That's exactly what I took. Uh, any continuation on that would be nice, but I'm not really prepared to call for any further. Um, yesterday's call was a bit of a, 
I mean, it's not one of those cha- it's not one of those setups which was absolutely obvious, but it 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 did make it quite likely that there was going to be a move up by five percent. And again, that's what we got. So the 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 daily was also getting rejection on the twenty one exponential moving average. The last time we touched this twenty one exponential was over here, uh, and we came all the way down. So I I am looking for obviously a new. Uh, lower high to form and then after that will be a lower low. The next opportunity for me is going to be roughly around 37,700. Uh, I'd like to see that area get tagged and see if we can get a support above there. That's a horizontal area of significance. goes back quite a little way. There's a lot of uh, price action that comes in roughly around that level but mostly the uh, more recent price action which pr- uh, proved this to be like a major resistance. So based on that you'd look for this to be a support. However, you know me, I much prefer a moving average, and if we do dig down lower than that, it's nothing more than opportunities sitting around 35,600 and 33,600. So, look, it's a, it's a slow and painful process when you consolidate, especially when you've been moving up for over a year. Um, you know, we've we've moved down quite sharp and quite fast. You know, from, from the top to, uh, you know, from wick to wick, that has been a... Uh, a 21% move over a period of nine days. That's quite steep for Bitcoin. You know, Bitcoin obviously does consolidate sharp and fast, but that was one of the bigger ones of uh, recent times. And you don't normally see it, it power down so dramatically, but it did. Let's face it, it did. So let's just finish off this uh, by thinking about the weekly and what the weekly is suggesting. So that is obviously you know, a, a shooting star. That's that's not a nice looking candle and that begged for a continuation down. Now, this is quite the opposite. Now, if we close this one in the green, then uh, excellent. However, I'm still not willing to play it because the risk to reward does not benefit me much here on the short term or the long term. Now, I see this and you can see this too the seven simple moving average on the weekly, which is the first moving average that we've had uh, and uh, for a long time that's proven to be a resistance and it's already doing it. So think about what's happening here. We've got the four hourly, which has got the 200 exponential death cross retest rejection. We've got the daily 21 exponential rejection. And now we're seeing a seven simple moving average on the weekly rejection. So when you look for resistances and supports across all time frames and you find symmetry you know, across them all, it adds way more valid, uh, validity to that being a real thing. You know, Sometimes moving averages get tested and you think, oh, well, I think maybe that was just a coincidence. Maybe it just did bounce from that area. And, yeah, there is a moving average in that area. and I'm trying to read too much into it. Maybe it was just a coincidence. But when there's three moving averages all at the same place, all f- offering the same rejection and all being respected pretty much to the tick, you pr- I would probably say that this is a big deal. And it would also be a big deal if we closed above it because that would be a major resistance broken. But at the moment, it's a major resistance. It's getting respected. So sit back, watch and wait. <clears throat> Opportunities may fall into your lap. Um, at the moment, the trade from yesterday is done. The 5% has been taken. And uh, we'll have to wait and see if we go higher or lower before we can try and plan for any more trades like that. At the moment, this isn't an up-only chart. This is basically a down chart. This is a sideways and down consolidation. It'll be volatile either way. It's not worth taking the risk. The best opportunities will be later on down the line, several months from now, when we've either found ourselves balancing out around here, resetting the, uh, the oscillators, or we actually come down to reset them from lower areas, which would be way, way better. All right, now... There is no more trading left to do, I don't think, over this weekend. It's probably one of those weekends that's probably best to enjoy <laughs> and not worry about price. Um, just having a think about Ethereum, though, uh, just, to, just to throw a little spanner in the works. Ethereum and altcoins. Now, there is a chance that these guys actually have uh, a rally similar to how Bitcoin performed yesterday. If Ethereum, which at the moment on this four-hourly looks similar to how Bitcoin looked yesterday before the pump, we might be looking for a pump on Ethereum and that would be continuation for altcoins. Um, And that means that Bitcoin doesn't necessarily need to do anything uh, other than generally hold this kind of area uh, to allow for this. 
The death cross retest to exponentials on Ethereum from price action right now would be 4%. Exp uh, and to the simple moving average would be a 5%. So what did we do yesterday? We, we checked the one hourly chart to see if there was any signals that would allow for that. And uh, judging by the one hourly on Ethereum, we have the pump signal already. We already have it. So we had the cross down here, the Chiku span outside, the cloud above the cloud. We've got uh, price above the cloud, and we've got a green portion of the cloud here. So actually, Ethereum does say that I would like to pump. There is a pump signal here, 2.5% uh, here, 3.5% here. Those would be the first targets. Um, and again, it's, it's not perfect, but it, it is offering a potential move here for maybe between a two and a half to a five percent move. I don't think you'll find me playing this one to be honest with you. Um, weekends are too busy for me uh, with two kids and all kinds of places to go and be and stuff like that to sit around on an Ethereum trade that only offers between two and a half to five percent. Not really worth my time to be honest when the larger Gains are all part of the the bigger master plan, which is to wait for the consolidation to over. Now, the easy trade was done yesterday, and what we're looking to do now is scrape the bottom of the barrel, really, to see if altcoins actually do mimic Bitcoin and, and fulfill this trade, which, again, I think is relatively likely, but from a risk-to-reward perspective, it, it makes me feel like it's not something I'm, I'm prepared to, to bother with. you know. And look. If Ethereum does two and a half to five percent, then some of these altcoins will do five to, to ten percent or, or more. Obviously, that's how it works. Um, but I'm not willing to uh, sit around and try and trade any of that. Quite happy with what happened yesterday, and we'll, we'll kind of leave it there for now. For now, right? So, uh, in a nutshell, yesterday done, dusted, you know, traded, bagged the profit. And today, chill out, watch and wait. If altcoins do what, what I think they're going to do, then fine. Am I, I'm not going to play it. No big deal. Um, and um, coming into next week, we'll see if this actually marks uh, another uh, lower high, or we'll see if this becomes effectively like a bear trap, which it could be. And this is basically where shorts would stack and uh, probably have stacked. And if you start to see us breaking out of here, uh, then shorts will start to go underwater because this is the area where you would short from. If you're ever going to get a pump signal on a four hourly, you're going to have to wait for this Chiku span to get outside of the price action. At this current price, it's going to take three days. So we're coming into Tuesday, Wednesday. You might generate a pump signal. If we're staying at this price or higher, we'd have a pump signal on the four hourly. That would be pretty good because you target that pump signal up to areas lost. And I would, first of all, be targeting like 44,000, which is a lot more obvious to see when you see it on a weekly here. Um, a lot of candle bodies uh, closing around $44,000. So that would be the first major target, to be honest, because it is such a significant zone. But you know, retesting the previous highs would not be out of, the, uh, out of the question either, back up to 48. So there is a possibility of like a major bear trap taking place here. But without the confirmation, which won't take place until Tuesday or Wednesday, <coughs> You can't set up trades in anticipation for a signal that hasn't quite generated and won't generate for like three and a half days. It's kind of madness to do that. So enjoy the weekend. Chill out, watch and wait. If you want to play the altcoins, play the altcoins. Um, I wouldn't say I think less of you for it. If you've got the time, the patience, the skill, the risk management to do that sort of thing, uh, more power to you. Um, unfortunately, I've got two children. And I have to deal with that all weekend, which is obviously a pleasure in its own right. Right, I'll leave it with you there. Thanks for watching. Please like the video and subscribe if you're not. Join the Telegram for more up-to-date stuff. Twitter as well. And if you really want to go one step further, do the Patreon. £7.50 a month, two live streams a week. Can't complain with that. Thanks for watching. Hope you have a nice day. Take it easy.